talking about that even more, I was kind of looking at the collections, you know, going down the runway. And for the most part, you know, there's been loads of great collections that I can talk about. But two that really stuck out for me and really kind of drummed home my kind of um, how I look at fashion and how it kind of talks to or appeals to different aspects of my life and how it informs the things that I do is uh, Victoria Beckham and Grace Wells Bonner, right? Now, both of these, there's nothing that you can kind of say that kind of ties them together apart from the fact that they're female, right? The fact that they're women in fashion. Uh, for the most part, uh, Grace Wells Bonner came into fashion from um, the uh, men's wear angle, just starting to do a, couple, a few women's, women's wear pieces now, which is kind of quote unquote her debut. Uh, but, you know, Victoria Beckham occupies a particular kind of niche and Grace Wells, uh, Grace Wells Bonner requires, occupies a different kind of niche. But what I like about it is that in Grace Wells, on Wells Bonner's end of it, she's like, you know, uh, an unabashed intellectual, right? A bookworm, somebody that really takes pleasure in really diving on deep into the themes and the ideas behind her collection. Somebody that's able to kind of reference really abstract things, but then kind of bring it back into this one um, unifying narrative. Somebody that's very um, able, just very... Um, you can tell what she's trying to do, right? She's trying to redefine this idea of black masculinity right the idea of what it means to be a man within black culture what it represents um trying to kind of bring it back to this kind of bit more of a sensitive a bit more of a wafy a bit more of a culturally aware idea of uh black identity and in general just kind of you know give it a little bit of an intellectual tint right not have it be maybe too street music kind of like surface layer based and a little bit more layered a little bit more culturally aware a little bit more intellectual for, for lack of a better term and then on the victoria beckham end of things you've got a woman who's kind of came into fashion you know you couldn't get more glitzy you couldn't get more glamorous you couldn't get more pop you couldn't get more uh general public right you couldn't get more let's say for lack of a better term vanilla than victoria beckham right but through a period of time through just hard work through very through like a you know a very kind of you know tumultuous journey through fashion where she was kind of the you know ostracized no one really wanted to be associated with her no one really wanted to review her shows people didn't really want to attend her shows people didn't really want to admit that they liked what she did um people didn't want to make sure she had she was validated um there was a real tension with, with it with her trying to fit in and it seems like in the last few years she's finally accepted herself finally kind of come to grips with how what role she plays in and she's finally been able to kind of you know display her idea of femininity right and i think this latest connection has been probably one of the best ones so far i mean the idea of like you know um offering uh, an entire wardrobe for the modern woman right being able to take her from dropping off the kids in the morning to going into the office to popping out for a boozy lunch to going out for a dance uh, to maybe going to a meeting to picking up your husband or partner wherever it may be like she's been able to provide an entire wardrobe for a woman who kind of wants to have it all and victoria beckham is you know the quintessential have it all person but there is something that ties them together and i thought this the idea of um it's the idea of uh kind of because I've, I've heard wells bonner talk about it where you know she's kind of come from being like a a young woman who's also a mixed race and having to kind of justify her blackness right because she's fairly uh let's say a uh, fair skinned right she kind of leans more towards the kind of white side of it looking wise right she's not she's just, apart from the hair made she come across very light looking right so i can imagine in her growing up in south london the idea of like you know wanting to prove that you're black wanting to kind of justify your blackness is a very hard thing right because you you know you've got your parents right you've got two parents one's black one's white you identify with both sides of it but you know, and yeah, from the outside or from the general public, for the most part, mixed race people are generally kind of just looked at as black, right? They're not necessarily looked at as as white, even, right? It's just they just kind of relegate you over there, and unless you kind of position yourself somewhere else. So it's that idea behind having to kind of juggle these two worlds, and then kind of do them justice by putting, you know, by what you send down the runway without kind of it, it coming across a little bit pastiche. And she's done a great job of doing that, and so has Victoria Beckham, right? She she somehow. Like, no one really talks about the fact that Victoria Beckham has more resources than anyone, probably, on the fashion, um, you know, scene or calendar, apart from maybe a Gabriela Hurst or, like, a Simona Rocha or someone, right? She has more resources than anyone to kind of really go for it and really do great work, right? Because, you know, effectively, her husband's David Beckham, right? They have all the money, all the resources to do a great job in fashion, but she's somehow been able to come at it and still be quite personable, and still be quite, and it feel real, right, and then it feel fake, you know, feel manufactured, it doesn't feel like it got rushed, because I'm sure, if you're, if you're Victoria Beckham, you could easily go out there, and just hire a bunch of kids, right, um, to just design your, 
your clothes, you for you to stand in front of it, pretend you designed something, and for it to look like everything that's on the runway, and for it to just look amazing and just really polished and just everything correct and nothing, everything perfect, just no duds in it. You could easily do that, but I think like I think in my opinion, what she done is that she purposely went into it and tried to make fashion and tried to design clothes. In the beginning, it didn't resonate, it didn't connect, it wasn't good, and it got better over time. And I think that has been able. She's because of that journey. She's been able to kind of do away with any sort of criticism that says, "Oh, you just you know you came into it being a sort of rich person, right? You came into it as you know one fifth of one of the you know biggest pop groups in the world, right? In the Spice Girls, and you're married to one of the biggest football stars in the world, in David Beckham. You have more resources than anyone out there. But through the journey of like you know making shitty clothes in the beginning, and then and then progressively getting better and better and better." Um, I think she's been able to kind of, you know, circumnavigate it. And now she's probably one of the leading voices within fashion or especially within that kind of, you know, uh, area of fashion where you're a, you know, you're a w modern day woman who kind of wants to look great, but don't, you don't want to look too fuddy daddy. You don't want to look too, you know, avant-garde. You just want to look stunning in the morning. You want to look as you've made an effort, but you also want to be super comfortable. And I think um, Victoria Beckham has been able to um, marry that with, you know, of course, great fashion. And on Grace Wells Bonner's side of it, she'd be able to marry the intellectual side of it, which can get a little bit lofty. It can maybe go a little bit over your head, but the clothes are just good. The clothes just look amazing. The clothes look like they fit like a glove. Like they look, um, some of the trousers for men, uh, the tailoring on them just looks fantastic. And, you know, it's not something that kind of guys look at, but they make your bum look great, right? And that's where we have a great sign for great trousers for guys. Like it, it makes your bum look super taut, right? Um, you stand up really well when some of the jackets looks like or some of the, the jumpers and shirts she makes. It makes you want to pull your shoulders back and really look up. Like there's something, there's just little things about it that I kind of love. And I think those two collections for me so far have been things that I've kind of looked at and been, oh my God, that's amazing. If, if, if ever there was a wardrobe I'd kind of want, you know, for a partner would be probably Victoria Beckham. And for just for me, it would be definitely um, what the stuff that Grace Wells Bond is doing. I'm going to quickly sc scroll through some of the stuff that I've seen here from both and then we can carry on but yeah um those two collections for me were some of the outstanding pieces that i saw and again um, i'm just happy for victoria beckham for the most part because i remember how again having read those magazines star magazine and a few others i remember what it what it was like for her in the beginning right how people were talking about her how people were talking about the the woman that she was catering to and now it seems like maybe she's kind of um benefited from the fact that you know uh fast fashion like zara and h&m have kind of proliferated into the fashion sphere and for the most part women in that area don't mind you know tapping into those kind of places to buy certain sort of staple pieces for their wardrobe people like cars uniqlo weekday have kind of done a good job about it even bershka for the for the most part in recent years and maybe the kind of you know the rising of aware the awareness in the general public of what fashion is has probably maybe helped her more because those women are now you know a good entry point to fashion might be going into it with um looking at stuff like uh victoria beckham does and maybe going to bottega veneta or to go into margaret howe maybe that's a little bit too um it's a little bit too fashiony, but in terms of just like an, an entryway victoria beckham is probably one of the best at doing it and again um if there's somebody out there who's really vying to swoop up or to vacuum up the old Celine client, I think Victoria Beckham's probably another one who's definitely occupying that space really well. And I think if you're a woman out there who was a big fan of what Phoebe Fowler was doing at Celine, I think you would be hard pressed to not to take a look at what Victoria Beckham is doing. And I'm going to get some of the stuff up there now. Um, and yeah, in general, just like great looks overall. Everything looks comfortable. Everything looks sleek. Everything looks sexy. Everything looks extremely wearable. And um, yeah, I love it all. And even these shoes that I'm not really a big fan of, right? These uh, peep toe shoes that I've that were really popular. I think a couple of years ago, you saw them everywhere wearing like in terms of you saw them in terms of mules. Now, a lot of the mules that girls are wearing are not peep toe. Um, but I, there's been a lot of this. I've seen, I think in the resort collection I showed a couple of weeks, a couple of episodes ago, kind of showed it. And I like that she's been kind of like carrying that through. Um, and again, just stuff that I will generally not like see effectively she's been able to make really sexy and really sleek and i'm sure women appreciate that as well for the most part um yeah just great tailoring great great look stuff that can easily be interchanged and kind of you know popped into different kind of outfits and just stunning as well and the styling as well is always really cool i'm not sure who styles the shows but the styling as well is also really really well really well done i'm a big fan of everything that victoria beckham does for the most part um yeah me likey me likey me likey I'm not sure if the diffusion line is still running. I'm sure she had a diffusion line, right? Victoria for Victoria or something like that. Um, 
but yeah i love the styling love the looks and again if i was a young lady uh making it in the industry i think this is definitely the kind of stuff that i'd want to wear um going to interviews going to work and I'll even even these little midriff pieces as well they're really interesting right the way it hugs the figure and really makes a great silhouette and again it could probably work really well depending on regardless of, of kind of the you know overall shape of the lady i think as well very very flattering again really really great pieces and just stuff that kind of looks like what something that victoria becker would wear right these trousers are this outfit essentially look number 32 is essentially like you know a quintessential outfit you'd see victoria beckham wear like it really kind of accentuates the legs great jump on top to kind of you know longer sleeves popping out the bag looks really cool it's another thing she does really well accessories i'm not sure the bag designer is for victoria beckham but they do a good job as well in that regard um, again, styling the color palette says so that that's a really again. I mentioned, I mentioned it a couple of times. I think if you ever want to get some hacks or get some tips into how to put outfits together in terms, of especially color based, because I think sometimes in wardrobes, I know for me, I usually go for the same sort of looks all the time because I know what works inside my wardrobe. But sometimes you can mix things up by going by color, by instead of going by what the thing is, instead of go, go, oh, this is a bomber jacket, you guys with this. No, go by what the color is, and sometimes to cheat. Just check some check some runway shows and look at the color palettes they use. You can easily get some tips on it. And this is quite a good idea, right? You've got like a dusty um, or like a light lilac top uh, jumper with a red skirt and red shoes, right? And it's something that you wouldn't necessarily put together in your outfit. Now, not, not, not everyone has these kind of bright colors in their wardrobe. For the most part, people just generally tend to go for quite subdued colors. But if you did have a red skirt or a pair of red jeans or a pair of red trousers or like a lilac blue top or, you know, something of those kind of lines, this is a good outfit to put together. Even if it was in jeans, a pair of shorts, it would look quite cool. Like I can imagine that kind of palette looking really well, looking really good in, with a pair of like vintage Patagonia shorts, uh, a kind of, you know, um, a random Hanes t-shirt that's kind of similar sort of color maybe deep purple with some sandals that would look really cool for the summer so again great look great outfits great color palettes from Victoria Beckham um that's one that's last look there blah, blah, blah. again it's just and you, you can just tell isn't it that's like a um I think she mentioned in the show notes that it was like an A to Z collection and you can actually tell like from the from the last look which is you know kind of like evening wear going out for dinner right um, with the fella, with the partner, and then from the from the beginning, you can tell that's like the business, it's like getting shit done, dropping the kids off, um, you know, going to meetings, whatever it may be. Um, again, so a great collection overall. Well done to Victoria. Agostina approves. I'm sure she's happy about that. <laughs> um, and then next on the list, um, we have Grace Wells Bonner. Of course, I'm a big fan of. I think she has an exhibition now at the moment going on at the Serpentine Gallery, I'm pretty sure. So check that out if you're in and around the area. I'm pretty sure it's a free exhibition, but it's going to finish soon, I think March 19th. So don't sleep. And again, um, a great collection that kind of nod gives nods to loads of very influential black intellectuals that I'm a big fan of. One of them being Ishmael Reed, which is kind of, you know, a, a screw on the top of this tunic. I'm, like, I love this tunic top. Again, just a, you know, you can read a lot into a clothes and probably reading too much into it but you know this kind of african inspired tunic that also has um african american you know clothes tied into it with the fact that it's a kind of like a baseball shirt it's just a clever it's clever but also just looks great right there's no need to kind of you don't need to know the backstory of it you don't need to know who ishmael reed is but just the fact that it looks like a baseball top that looks it, it looks like a cross between a tune an african tunic and a baseball top is just fun, kind of perfect for me and then the, and then i also love the fact that she always does really good african shoes like african african uncle inspired shoes i think if you just type in grace wells bonner onto google images you'll see some of the shoes that she makes it's just like ridiculous looking shoes that remind me a lot of like the uncles that used to come into barbershops when i used to be younger and i was only allowed to go to the barbershop my dad went to now i go to my own one you know but back in the day when you're younger and your dad takes you to those african barbershops that you know it takes you fucking four hours to get a haircut and the haircut's fucking terrible but it's always good jokes always good banter and you always have these guys coming in who look like you know they're going out to party but they're just going to hang around with their friends in a barbershop and talk shit but yeah um overall again i just love her idea of the modern man the modern black man is essentially um it's just really nicely done um there's loads of really nice pieces in there that you know of course apply to those different wardrobes and just great looks overall great tailoring pieces and just you know I i'm a real big fan of it of course there's a inclusion of loads of women's looks which are kind of the main reason why she showed to kind of debut that collection but the men's stuff is just so great man i'm a real big fan of the stuff that she she, she does uh grace one of my favorites of the 
of the fashion calendar outside of the J.W. Edison's all those kind of likes and maybe it is for me like an extension of what J.W. Edison does right but again maybe with a with a the perspective being more so you know the black intellectual class and nowadays especially with you know what's happening in London nowadays I think it's even more important to have a voice within London you know being able to speak um, or being able to present a different version a different vision of what it means to be um a kid living in the inner city, a black kid living in the inner city. You've got someone like a Cold War doing the same thing, right? Representing one image, and you got this too. So I'm a big fan of it overall. Um, just beautiful. Like this this look here, look number 23. It's just incredible, isn't it? The hat, the big shoe jacket, the trousers, the shoes. It's just all really perfect. I'm a big fan of what she does. So big up Grace Walls Bonner um, for doing that.